everyone and welcome back. In our previous video we've installed a couple of softwares, MPLAB IDE and uh, MPLAB compiler which is helping us in the background of this software. Um, today let's talk about the main hardware that we're going to be using for our projects. So let's start with programmers, debuggers. Um, so the first one that I was using uh, for many years is a PIC kit 2. Um, if you've got it then yes we can make use out of it. Um, we're going to talk about this a little bit more uh, later on. But this has been replaced with um, the latest, the, the later on one which was uh, PIC kit 3 which is this one. Yes, and um, this one works still fine and uh, is supported by the MPLAB X current um, version of the software. So we've got that one and we've got the latest, latest one debugger program MPLAB PICKIT 4. So that's how it looks, the latest one. Um, and obviously, being the latest tool. Um, is fully compatible with all the latest software so if you've got this one there is no worries that um, it's not gonna work however we're gonna be talking about some uh, slight issues that we might have by using this one uh, but that's throughout the projects we're gonna explain this um, so out of these three really um, I don't know if you've noticed uh, there is a difference, this one is slightly different and the reason being is this one uh, is, let's call it the uh, compatible one, it's not the original um, microchip as the other two. Uh, I bought that one out of curiosity, is how it's looking, how it's performing and to be honest I bought this one, it came in, I plugged it in and it's working fine. So. Um, and this one costs about 15, 10, 15 pounds as of um, January uh, 2021 and uh, the original pick kit 4 costs about 70, 60, 70 pounds so really as a, as a startup, as a hobbyist um, I think pick kit 3 would do you just, just good so uh, yeah, definitely um, something that you could look into if you not already got this one. Um, right, so these are our programmers debuggers. Now let's have a look at the uh, designing boards. So um, there are a few types of a design boards. You can buy some of them that are kind of a designed for a specific type of um, microcontroller. This one has got the socket of four for forty pin microcontroller and really you have to use a 40 pin microcontroller because that, that's the socket and uh, it's got some um, built-in um, peripherals so if you want to use a speaker LCD you've got some buttons um, I think that's the oscillator for it so yeah that's that's the board um, little bit better one in terms of um, prototyping and designing are the boards with uh, sockets that can uh, nest different types of PIC microcontrollers so as you see on this one um, this one uh, I've been using that one for about more than a 10 years now I guess so around 10 years so it's, it's, it's very useful it's a very good board. So what we've got here are the sockets for a different type of uh, PIC microcontrollers. Um, however, you have to be careful as uh, PIC 10 socket is not going to hold PIC 12. If if you have a look closer, that there is that socket you're going to use from the top to the to there for a PIC 12. Uh, microcontrollers and uh, this is uh, because um, of the uh, power supply to the uh, PIC VDD and VSS 
positive and negative um, there are uh, going to a different pins if you if you notice like on a pick 10 there's our positive there is there's our negative so we're talking about the uh, pin number two and pin uh, number uh, seven and on that one the positive is on the pin number one and pin number 20 so really really have to be careful so that's a very good um, board we've got different um, sockets for uh, uh, sorry different uh, pins for um, our debugger programmer so for the different sockets and we've got different sources of the power supply uh, from the battery or from the power supply plugged into the mains switches on and off um, so how would we use this board we would put a pick microcontroller in one of the sockets and then as this board comes in with the pick uh, came in with the pick kit too um, I'm going to use this one so we would plug in the pick kit debugger programmer into the relevant uh, socket there and there we go so again although the pick kit can supply the power to to the to the pick microcontroller and to the board um, I recommend you use some external source of power supply and uh, we will see later on why why this is uh, a good idea so that's that board so very very useful if you got something similar then then uh, I'm sure you found it very very useful as well um, we've got this K150 programmer um, so this is a very very good device again um, we can use it with um, a variety of the peak microcontrollers uh, for that one you would have to install a special software and uh, you can program the chip again you would need some um, programmer debugger and um, the pick it to it kind of fits there you have to bend it slightly there but I don't know if you can see it but still it will do the job it will do the job nicely um, if you want to use um, the K150 programmer with any of the pick kit um, debuggers so just let me know and we'll do a separate run on how do we use that one but nevertheless after you program this one uh, program the pick microcontroller using this board you would still need uh, some developing space where actually our final solution comes into place which is as you probably guessed by now um, -da, breadboards Breadboards very useful, very very useful. I don't know if uh, you disagree or disagree, but I'm finding them um, very good. Um, so this is a typical, just a one piece of a breadboard. And what we can say about this is we've got two different, separate actually um, developing spaces. Uh, the rows, rows are connected in this section and on that section rows are connected columns are separate which is very good and we got two separate we can like detach them or attach um, more of them and two separate power rails and again the power rail is um, um, some of them are connected like in, in full run and some of them halfway somewhere there there is a break so if you supply the power to this pins to this this pins then you might find that there is no power down there and this is because you would have to put a jumper from here to there and from here to there to connect it and um, this is our uh, breadboard and if you have a look if you look around to buy one they usually come with a very useful power supply to the board so this is typical power supply board and um, it's very simple and very useful we've got the switch on and off we've got the LED out of the main components the LED so to indicate if it's on or off uh, you 
put the socket for the uh, power supply plug and then selection of 3.3 and make it in focus 3.3 and 5 volts so um, very useful voltages however most of the time we do you tend to use 5 volts um, 5 volts yes there we go so that goes to the board sort of a somewhere here and remember as we said uh, before um, some of the breadboards they do have a break somewhere in the middle so the power although it's been delivered from that uh, power supply positive and negative it will stop somewhere around there and it will not travel to those pins as there is a break so you have to use a jumper we will have a look at this uh, later on in the next videos we've done so because there are different um, designing boards as we've seen different um, developed boards uh, I will stick to the breadboard so we can have a look together as how we gonna do this on, on, on that very common piece of uh, hardware it's very unlikely that we all will be working on the same developing board or or, or similar so we'll stick to the breadboard um, I'll be using that one with a few more pieces as our projects grow as uh, we do different um, programming stages we might find useful to um, buy some more and connect them it's very easily you just latch them together like so and then there we go you got quite nice space for developing your software again I recommend we use an external source for the power supply to power up the pick and our design um, pick kit can supply the power it's, it's 5 volts but um, it could be tricky sometimes we could encounter some programming problems but we will have a look at that um, as we go through our projects so for that I'm gonna be using as well a power supply with the relevant plug so I'm just gonna keep the plug in there and then as we switch it on and off it will supply us the 5 volts or 3.3 just a just a small note there um, I've got my jumpers set to 5 volts to supply the 5 volts on the both ends However, I've seen, I've seen someone who's been using the power supply, and they they've con they wanted to transfer the power from here to there. They used the long jumpers. They had set this one to 3.3, that one to 5 volts, and it's not gonna be <laughs> working well. So it's best to set the power voltages as required over over there on the jumpers and leave it like that okay this is a normal uh, power supply um, so actually um, master BT power switch and supply out of my old uh, switch um, internet switch uh, that I got from the BT and I'm not using it anymore so um, I've got the power supply so what it can deliver is 12 volts 12 volts up to 1000 milliamps or so 1 amp which is plenty for what we'll be doing we're not going to be even using that so uh, that that's that's very very good 12 volts um is a little bit more than uh, what the board will be supplying but there is no worries as um, on the board there are voltage regulators actually those two so there's a 5 volts and 3.3 voltage regulators I don't know if you can uh, see that if I'll be able to zoom it but now the camera's not up kind of I'm not liking it so you can see there are 3.3 that's 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 the voltage that we're gonna get and 5 volts that's the 5 volts that this device is 
supply and reducing it to from 12 to 5 volts and from 12 to 3.3 because our projects will be mm, not very current demanding the power dissipation on them is going to be very low so um, they shouldn't be overheating or heating too much so that's 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 good this cameras out of focus it doesn't like zoom in zoom out <laughs> yeah so that's it as to the hardware this is the setup that I will be using all the time next time we're gonna have a look at the uh, peak microcontrollers and we're gonna start programming them and uh, we'll see the very major differences between different peak microcontrollers so I welcome you guys to the next video thank you very much for today and uh, see you next time bye